All right. Uh, Shalom. Before I start, I'm give all praises to Yahweh, Bashem Yahshai, Bashem Rechach Rosh, the wonders of the apostles, and the great millstone. Peace, blessings, and salutations to all like the Akim, Wak, Wakim, learning, teaching, and truth, and sincerity. And this one, you know, it's, uh, you know, it's going to go how the Spirit led it. But this is basically a response video to the uh, the brother, uh, Priest Shaman from Chicago, uh, from New York on the GMS Born Again channel. He did a video, what is your greatest uh, takeaway from this truth? You know, and that video really, uh, you know, it, it uh, touched my spirit. And I've been thinking, uh, thinking on it, you know, for I myself, you know, my biggest takeaway from this truth so far. All right, and that's basically what, uh, this is basically just going to be uh, my response to it. Let me see. I was so dang ready to start the uh, start the camera. I forgot to uh, grab the scripture before uh, I had started it, but I know the general uh, area it's in. But basically, you know, us, you know, in this flesh, coming from the different uh, walks of life, you know, we're, there's different things that we might, uh, you know, uh, we're one body, we're one mind, and Yahweh Bashem Yahweh Shai, but. We all have different uh, viewpoints on certain things and righteousness, of course. All right? It all has to be uh, filtered uh, through righteousness. Let me see. I'm going to just uh, type it in for the interest of time. And I'll start to uh, go in on it. Because basically, uh, this is my... Uh, where is it at? Where is it at? I know it's in Matthew. God damn it. God, 10. Flip clean over it. All right, this is Matthew chapter 10. I'm going to start. And you know what? Hey, that's the spirit anyway. Because Matthew, uh, hey, Matthew chapter 10. <laughs> I'm going to start at. I'm going to start at verse 37. All right. So it says, He that loveth father or more, mother more than me is not worthy of me. And he that loveth son or daughter more than me is not worthy of me and he that taketh not his cross and uh and he that taketh not his cross and falleth after me is not worthy of me he that findeth his life shall lose it and he that loseth his life for my sake shall find it all right and you know my big biggest takeaway so far is that you literally have to sacrifice your life everything that you knew everything you thought you once understood all the things that you thought you enjoy, you have to sacrifice it for your Yahweh Bashim Yahweh Shai. All right, now I'm not telling you to get up and quit your job and move out your house and be a bum. No, but you have to understand that everything in this world, imagine being on a boat. The boat of this world, this, this is a boat headed down to Niagara Falls. This is a boat literally headed down uh, a waterfall. And there's another boat on a on the on a space a body of water up ahead and the only way you can make it to that boat is for this boat to go down and to, for you to be saved and put on the next boat so that's how you know that's how i uh i visualize this world this place there's no there's no reason to have long-term aspirations here so really we're not losing anything uh anyway all right we, we've just been Born in this world, you know, so we're used to it. You know, you might have had dreams of being a, you know, when I was coming up in school originally, I wanted to be a veterinarian. You know, as I grew older, uh, <laughs> I'll say uh, my heart got colder, all right, and things changed. But once I found this truth, you know, I realized all that had to be given up, all right? And you look at our, our leading apostle, Apostle uh, Tahar, if he was still in the world, he could be uh, one of the top, well, you know, he would have been one of the top boxers and by now would have retired, filthy rich. All right, the brother of uh, my right-hand man, Arya, in this camp, you know, he was on his way to becoming an MMA star. All right, uh, the elder Malcolm, we would have been watching him on TV, the elder Malcolm of New York, elder Uriah, I mean, it's like the elder Malcolm of Chicago. All right, elder Uriah of uh, Chicago, we would have been watching him on TV. All right, and many countless other brothers, we've all given up the things that we held dear in the world. All right, I myself, nah, and I don't need to go down the, the damn rap sheet. Brothers that know me know 
what I used to be into, know what I was on. But, you know, we could have went on a whole different other avenue. But we realized this truth. We saw the light. And we, hey, you know what? Let me get, uh, and I'm going to come back to this 39. But let me get this scripture. Because as soon as we heard the call, as soon as we saw the light, we dropped everything. All right, Revelation 14 and 4. These are they which were not defiled with women, for they are virgins. These are they which follow the Lamb, whithersoever he goeth. These were redeemed from among men, being the first fruits unto the most high power to the Lamb. And that's, hey, that's the, that's the Spirit, redeemed. Lord willing, we'll be redeemed out of this dying world, out of this world that's headed down a waterfall into destruction and put on the, the rafts of salvation into, into the everlasting kingdom. That's our reward for doing this. So basically, you got to be willing to sacrifice. You actually have to be willing to give up on your aspirations in this world. You have to understand that you just get a job so you can live your day to day. All right. You don't need to be aspiring to be making six figures, hundreds of millions of thousands of dollars. All right. You don't got to expire to uh, just get you a car that works. Just get a car that works and that runs. This is not our world. You want to get you a what? A 2019 uh, Lamborghini. When for all we know, this world could be destroyed. Come 2020, this could we we're at the end of days. All right. And that's another thing when you realize that. You know, all this is going to hell, figuratively speaking. You realize that all these things are vain. So what does that leave you with? All right. Hebrews chapter. Let me get it. I ain't going to try to make it too long. You know, I, was, I just wanted to give my piece on it. You know, my biggest takeaway so far, you got to be willing to sacrifice. You have to be willing to give up on this world. All right. This America, this world is on life support. Let it, let it go. Let it go. It's, it's gone. Let it go. These people have to die. This money has to fail. All right. The stock market has to crash. World War III has to be initiated. Missiles must burn Babylon. Esau, the so-called white man, must die. All right. Uh, Hebrews 13 and 14 says, for here we have no continuing city, but we seek one to come. So here in this world, nothing here is truly ours. There's nothing here that's yours. I don't care if you bought your house. I don't care if you bought the land that your house is built on. The Esau, the so-called white man, can still slap some tax on you or find some reason to come in, guns a-blazing, and get you up out of there. So this isn't our world. So really, that's why it says in this Matthew, because we're not losing out on anything anyway. All right, Matthew 10 and 39, he that findeth his life shall lose it, and he that loseth his life for my sake shall find it. So you have to be willing to lose everything in this world for Yahweh Bashim Yahushai. The Your status in society, how people look at you, how people talk to you, all right? But people will notice, uh, you know, your beard start growing out, so they're like, oh, you're a bummy. You bum, women may not want to mess with you anymore. You may have to, you may lose out on women. You may lose out, lose out on the love of your life for this truth. You have to be willing to accept that. You may lose your children, all right, whether it be they're separated through the court systems or they, you know, the mom takes them and leaves. You have to be willing to accept that and to understand everything is for the greater good. It's for our city that's to come. It's for that, that life raft that's over there. These people have no idea What's about to happen to them. And if they all fucking did. They they would change right now. If these people. Uh, where's that? Uh, I believe. It might be in Jonah. But dealing with the city. Uh, the city. I believe, I believe it was Nineveh. When they heard the destruction. That came. Uh, they repented. But you know these people. They hear what we have to say to them. And they don't want to repent. Therefore, they have to be destroyed. <laughs> Where is it at? Uh, I may have spelled it wrong. Let me see if I can uh, if I can pull it up real quick in uh, Jonah, or it might be in uh, it might be in Tobit. Or you know what? You know what? So uh, let me type in, because uh, I might be getting mixed up with the city and compile. Uh, what is it? Comp 
Capernaum. And so like, and, and through the Spirit, you know, I didn't have it a uh, plan. You know, majority of these scriptures, I just let the Spirit roll. Let's see, let's see, let's see. It looks like Matthew chapter 11. Let's see. Kind of, yeah, okay, this is Matthew chapter 11. I'm going to start at verse, uh, hey, yep, this is spirit, because how shy I started, it says it, uh, Matthew 11 and 20, it says, then began he to upbraid the seas, wherein most of his mighty works were done, because they repented not. Woe unto thee, uh, uh, Chorazin, woe unto thee, Bethsaida, for if the mighty works which were done in you had been done in Tyre and Sidon, they would have repented long ago and sackcloth and ashes. So, Salak, I was thinking of uh, Nineveh. Uh, I was probably getting mixed up with the book of Tovit. But it says, uh, if the mighty works that were done there were done in Tyre and Zidon, they would have repented long ago in sackcloth and ashes. So, basically, Lord was saying, look, them damn heathens would have repented, you know, if I was over there doing what I was doing uh, for them. There's another scripture uh, where basically, I believe it's in Jeremiah, the Lord said if he would have went to the heathens and told them that they're the Lord's chosen people, they would all accept and wake up. But you look today now, our people, we're telling them who they are and they don't want to get it. So, hey, hey, look towards the kingdom. Let this world spiral down into destruction. All right. Each day that passes, try to loosen your ties to this world, whether it be physically or emotionally, because eventually all of this is going to have to go. And there can't be anything that you have of a, a higher esteem in this world than Yahweh Bashim Yahushai. You can't care about your kids more. You can't care about your fucking lifestyle more. Because what, what are you going to do if Esau's so-called white man puts a gun to your children's head or says, okay, I'm going to make you homeless. That's when the mark of the beast is initiated. We're not going to be able to work more than likely. We're not going to be able to go to these supermarkets when everyone else is going. Uh, that's being chipped while the system is, you know, still running before it completely goes under. All right. You have to be willing to lose all of that for the sake of Yahweh Shai Hamashiach. All right. For the kingdom. You know, so hey, that was, you know, that was my uh, piece on it. You know, currently, that's my biggest takeaway. We have to be willing to sacrifice you have to be willing to lose your life spiritually speaking metaphorically speaking in this world you have to be able to let let it go people are going to now hate you you're not going to be as cool as you might have been all right hell you <laughs> shit you might start losing hair all right on your head you might start balding but if you're willing to lose all of those things for y'all about shim y'all shy he's gonna uh He's going to reward us. Let me check for one more thing. So, uh, okay, yep, I just got uh, this to close it out. Matthew uh, 6. And because uh, really I could start at 25. He was basically telling his apostles, you know, don't take any care for what you need to drink, what you need to eat. You know, the Lord, uh, he gives, he feeds the birds. All right. He makes sure the flowers grow and they don't have to work. All right. Things like that. So I'm going to start at 31 now. It says, uh, Matthew 6 and 31, it says, Therefore, take no thought, saying, What shall we eat, or what shall we drink, or wherewith shall we be clothed? For all these things do the Gentiles seek, for your heavenly Father knoweth that ye have need of all these things. So the people in this world, hey, they seek the world. They seek the car. They're chasing a, a, they're on a treadmill sprinting out a carrot. You know, so let them have it. Verse 33, But seek ye first the kingdom of the Most High Power and His Righteousness, and all these things shall be added unto you. So seek Yahweh Bashem Yahushai above all else. We'll get everything back and more. Don't make me go grab Job. And it, hey, it just, <laughs> it just, it, hey, through the Spirit. We're going to get back everything that we lost in this world, Lord willing, and more than we can handle in the kingdom. So, so if it comes down to it, be willing to let it all go. All right. If you got to let, if you got to let, Old girl go, let old girl go. If you if you gotta uh, switch jobs because they trying to make you work on your camp day, then hey, they talking about no, nah, you gonna work these Saturdays. You gotta make that choice. If you gotta make that choice, all right. This I don't know a whole lot, but I know this truth is correct, and this is the only thing that's 
this is the only good thing that's in this fucking that's in this world. All right, Job chapter forty-two, verse uh, twelve. It says, "So the Lord blessed the latter end of Job more than his beginning, for he had fourteen thousand sheep, and six thousand camels, and a thousand yoke of oxen, and a thousand she asses." Uh, you know, and that being the main point, because it goes down the list and it says, so the Lord blessed the latter end of Job more than his beginning. So he was already known in the beginning for being ultra rich. So he was ultra, ultra rich by the time his afflictions was up, man. So, hey, be, be willing to sacrifice if it comes down to it. You know, that was my response to the, uh, the brother priest Shaman. Hey, so with that, I'm going to give all praises to you. Yahweh the one or the apostles, those great millstone, peace, blessings, and salutations to all like the Akim, walk, walk, learning, teaching, and truth, and sincerity. With that, I'm going to say Shalom.